What's up, everybody? You are listening. You are watching The Complex Sneaker Show. As always, I'm joined by my two co-hosts, my two friends. To my right, Mr. Matt Welty. We're here. We're surviving. We are. To my left, Mr. Brendan Dunn. Hello. How are we doing? 200th episode? Yeah. Is there more confetti? We had one single slice of confetti accidentally fall in the last episode. Okay. Or is there any? I'm going to close my eyes. You tell me if there's any confetti falling right there's, now. There's none. Should we? There's no, should I open my eyes? There's no confetti? No. Should we undies the Nike Air horn? <laughs> bam, bam, bam. Yeah. you know can we get someone in post <laughs> Blow your i, I kind of wow. wanted to go up there and grab it but it would no it's a collectible 200th yeah. episode here we are another week do you remember where they dropped those it was at the uh, no nike, i don't nike even know soho. where we got that, that was from nike soho did you around bring the time that? that they first opened no yours? i didn't what was, oh that's not yours yeah i don't know where it's we not, got that it's not mine nice piece cool of, memorabilia, piece of history that's yep. what we do make history every week <laughs> Right? A lot of history in this episode wow. coming up. Yes. I'm surprised you didn't say aloha instead of hello. Oh. This, <laughs> listen, this uh, this week we have a big, big guest. Yes. Tons of history. I remember when I was an intern, seeing him from afar, I think calling in samples under Bradley Carbone when this guy was at Kicks Hawaii. So, yeah. Yeah, Ian Ganoza is here. We're going to talk about his long, long history of brands like Converse, Nike, Wait, you Adidas. Called in, you called in samples from Hawaii? I was calling in samples <laughs> everywhere. Products at complex.com was my email. Joe's putting in Didn't work. Didn't even give me the government. <laughs> what else Did do we want to chat about? Government. What else do we want to chat about? I want to talk a little bit more Air Max DN as we always do. Okay. I want to get Wealthy's take on Bodhi Astro Grabbers now that we've seen some oh, more of them. Oh, boy. And also I want to complain about StockX. So, okay. you know, the usual suspects. Yes, the usual the usual uh, suspects. I, I know I, I use StockX way more than y'all. Do you, I use it a lot. To sell, though. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Wealthy, do you ever sell on StockX anymore? Uh, not anymore. Yeah. I, those days have come and gone. The um, pain when you sell something and then you realize you listed have it? the wrong thing and you don't have it. What was it? If you sell enough stuff, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> well, you <can. laughs> If you sell enough stuff on there, sometimes they'll let you live and you won't get hit with a fee when your order gets canceled. Yeah. And this time I was just like, I just let the emails roll in. They're like, mm -hmm. you need to ship this to us. And this is totally on me. I'm I'm not saying this is like legitimately a flaw in StockX. This is my mistake. I didn't yeah. have the shoes that I listed. But I think it's 15% of the of the price of the sale or $15, whichever one is higher. Which they, one was higher? They hit me with the 15%. Dude, I got a, they, StockX canceled my sale. I got like a $60 charge on my account. How Wait, are we damn. Gonna, we could break out the calculator. Hate to see it. <laughs> how are we going to dig ourselves out of that hole? Hate to see it. <laughs> you might see some real struggle brand posts on my IG soon trying to recoup. Talking about spending, someone who didn't have a problem with spending, Conor McGregor on the new episode of Sneaker Shopping. Please go check that out electric at the trophy case at stadium goods still celebrating saint patrick's day a week later yes joe came back in for round two knockout okay. or so how's my stance well too Oof. That's, he, <laughs> the, the mic's in, in the way he'd be in a rear naked choke in 30 seconds right <laughs> I, no oh, I, I, thought, I thought you were i doing, might be naked i thought you were doing like the <laughs> I thought you were doing like the notre dame mask oh up. like the like the like, fighting yeah, yeah. <laughs> fighting irish good episode on we, could we call it a great episode? It is a great episode. <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal, Conor McGregor. Yeah. Next week, another banger. I know I keep saying it, but we're on a run, baby. Why not? Yeah, we're on a run. Why not? This guy tried to... What, what did you... What, what did you... He tried to... What, what did you Insert try to, some geopolitics into your geopolitical, friendly little yeah. sneaker show? Yeah. I wanted you to ask Conor McGregor about wearing Reebok because Conor McGregor wore Reebok for yes. a number of years, was affiliated with them through UFC and... Reebok's most famous sneakers have the Union Jack flag on them, the British mm -hmm. flag on them, and I thought that might be a little bit of a conflict of interest for such a proud Irishman as Conor McGregor. And in fact, I once had a really interesting, enlightening conversation with the Irish designer Robin Lynch, whose work I love, and she told me about how in her childhood, growing up in Ireland, the kids would cover up the mm. British flag on their Reeboks with a bit of white out and draw an Irish flag over it. And I thought that was a beautiful story, and I offered it to you. And Listen, I take suggestions. Sometimes I take a lot of them. Sometimes, but yeah, yeah. Put it in the suggestion box. Yeah, sometimes it's a black hole in there. We 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 don't. But yeah, good episode uh, talking I, about. I'll, I hope I get the chance to talk to Conor McGregor about yeah, that one day. Absolutely. He's Sit down with a cheeky pint. What is what is his bar called? What 
uh, where they do the hip hop nights. Old, old forged in. <laughs> yeah, I believe he just launched a forged step. Yes, yes, the forged step. Be- okay. A lot of some behind the scenes biggest entourage. He had like his a bunch of companies. It, yeah. The stadium goods was packed that day. You always pack them out. You know it. Like I said, <laughs> Air Max DN. Oh yeah. What else? Oh, right. no, what, what an exciting shoot to talk okay, about. Okay, no, th- this is this is. A, I want to talk about not talking about it. Okay. So I want to propose something to you, wealthy. Okay. What if since we're not that excited about the shoe. I think it's okay. You hate it. Joe, do you do you care for the DM? Indifferent. Indifferent. What if we just agreed as an outlet to just not talk about well, the DM? Well, you're ever. doing the exact No, opposite. but yeah, but I'm, I want to have the conversation with you. Should we just ignore the DM for the that. rest of the year? You can't do that. Why not? Just ignore it? What if something happens? We got to talk. Well, to I mean, if something happens, sure, right? But... I mean, we are making a editorial decision choosing to talk about it, right? I know. I just think it'd be fun to like work against all Nike's marketing and brand spend on it and be like, you know what? As far as we're concerned, the Air Max DN doesn't exist. Hmm. Didn't you do an interview about it? Yeah. Well, okay, so what's we'll, we'll do you, the did one. You, we'll did, do you the... Play, did you play a role in the cog? Oh. Well, listen, we wanted to review the shoe. We wanted okay. to get the story straight from Nike. But if they're okay. just going to slap a bunch of Volt colorways on it and industrial blue shades on there and things industrial. like that, then, <laughs> then like, I don't think we need to talk about every... So can, should we put an official moratorium on the DN right here right now? Sure, unless there's something actually exciting about it. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not agreeing to that. <laughs> You're not? You're going to talk about the shoe? I'll do what I want. You're gonna That's a, true. That, he, he, you will do, do what, what he chose. He's probably going to host the Air Max Day. Like. No. Maybe. Why not? <laughs> Air happen. Max Day 2025? Could happen. <laughs> right to the camera. Spike the lens. <laughs> there we go. Spike the lens. What about the Bodie Astro Grabbers? We've seen a little bit more of them now, Wealthy. Oh. Um, well, the black one stinks, right? Okay. It's just, it's just not. I like the black one better. But the black on. one like reminds me of... Yes. I know everyone says it looks like a shoe that people played football in with like leather helmets. Mm-hmm. Um, it just kind of reminds me of back in the day when my dad was like, "Hey, I got a pair of uh, soccer shoes that that you can wear," and goes into the basement and pulls out a pair of Patricks from like oh. the early '80s or '70s, just like black leather. That's how the Bodies make you feel. Yeah, and they were a turf shoe as well, so it had a, a similar. I feel uh, like Io got them off though. I think she looked good in the sneakers. That helped convince me, although maybe I didn't need that much convincing. I've, I've kind of been interested. I mean, I in think the, the, the white pair looks significantly cooler see i have to disagree with you there oh. I'm, a, I'm a leather sneaker guy how okay. cool give me a little bit of leather actually give me a lot of leather how is china <laughs> <laughs> we, we should just say right we're filming two in one day yeah we, yeah. we yeah we filmed this early yeah so uh, i so we filmed <laughs> yeah we recorded this before i left for complex con hong kong and i have to say complex con hong kong was amazing wow and delivered wow. on every front and I had an incredible experience in Hong Kong and got to know the local culture there and met a bunch of good people. <laughs> but really, but really and, yeah, you but, should do your disclaimer just in case any news drops. And Yeah, right, right, right. It, it's so funny in, in my mind you throwing out like some sort of just like pretending that yeah. like <laughs> you know, just, that just, everything was great. And then, I mean, fingers crossed. Oh, God. I don't make it back. No, no, but like, so, yeah. like some situation could yeah. have occurred that you have to like actually not not saying to discuss, yeah, yeah, but yeah. just you don't know. Like, yeah, no, I'm okay. At the time we're recording this, yes. I'm really looking forward to going to Hong Kong for Complex Con China. I think it'll be an amazing experience. I'm sure when we come back, I will be recapping in earnest mm-hmm. all the incredible stuff I did and saw and ate. Yeah. But we won't be back for a little bit because the week after this we have off. But yes, yeah. the, the PSA, like Joe said. So yeah, we did. And if any news breaks. We'll, we'll get on it and and, just, and we'll do fake photoshops of it too. <laughs> oh, we'll do wow. some we'll do some mock-ups. All fake narratives. What else? We have a great guest. Let's- yeah, well, listen, we have a great guest. So the banter is a little short because we wanted to get if you don't know, you're gonna know. Let's bring on our guest. Let's do it. Our guest on today's show is an industry veteran who's played every major position in the space. He is the co-founder of famed sneaker and streetwear stores like Kicks Hawaii in Honolulu and the iconic St. Alfred in Chicago. Over the span of his 25 plus years in the industry, he's held major product and marketing positions at Converse, Nike, and Adidas, working alongside Virgil Abloh, Tom Sachs, Tyler the Creator, and Beyonce. Currently, he serves as Global Vice President and Creative Director of Pinnacle Product at Vans. Here to talk his extensive history, please welcome Ian Ganoza. Ian, thanks so much for taking the time. Welcome to the Complex Sneaker Show. We always, uh, obviously, we have the sneaker cam, but what are you wearing on feet? Half cab Vibrams. Okay. So these are the one of the part of the OTW main line. So obviously, OTW is tasked with working with 
collaborations and, 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 and through entities and individuals, but we also have a very compelling mainline. And this is the first kind of release of, of that mainline. Awesome. I'm doing Born and Raised SB Dunks. This is the first time I've actually put this shoe on my feet. This is such a good shoe. I think we I think we messed up a little on bit in leaving, in leaving this shoe off of our top 10 last mm. year. This is a beautiful sneaker. Are, looks good. Definitely better than Drake's. Yes. Sneakers. Ooh, oh, rest in man. peace, Sponto. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. I'm doing the olive colorway of the undefeated Terra Yumora. Nice. Did the black one, and now uh, we're on to the you olive. Have them all? I don't have them all. I have these, these and the black ones, but yeah. I have them all. Uh, just doing Joe Fresh Goods 993s. Okay. Very nice. Classic. Yeah. You know, something that's embedded in my mind, I, I don't want to get too all over the place, but you guys did the three feet high vans back in the day, right? We did. Kicks we did. high. I remember it was a DQM that was like a look t like chef. The, the, the chef, butcher paper, right? Chef yeah, pants. Mm -hmm. And then I just remember Kicks High was part of that pack. Yeah, it was uh, Kicks Hawaii Huff at the yes. time and DQM. And we kind of all grew up together and yeah. well obviously they're from new york but mm -hmm. when they would come to san francisco where i was based we would click up and go skateboarding and then when we opened up the shops we just kept it moving yeah and i remember just early complex magazine days and uh you know bradley working with you and that's yeah. like you first got on my radar so happy to have you here again thank you guys for having some me. years later yeah. right yeah. this yeah. guy has such a long long history yes. he's one of the guys in the industry who i've always wanted to talk to and i'm i'm happy we finally have oh, a chance no, so, I, I think it. the first time i uh, heard of your name is like on the hypebeast blog do you have a hypebeast blog back in the day yeah like the... before uh social media and all that yeah. there was a blog that kevin was doing at hypebeast yeah. and i was yeah one of the bloggers and like yeah. lupe had a blog as well yeah. and mm -hmm. then on mm -hmm. paris tokyo he shouts out you and then like half the other people who are on the hypebeast blogs at the at yeah the time. um i met lupe and Verge and that whole click when we opened up St. Alfred mm, in, Chicago. in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Ian says aloha. Yeah, aloha. <laughs> <laughs> was that a big moment for you when he put your name in a song? Um, like that? It was unexpected, but you know, um, you know, I love Lou. He's still one of my favorite uh, lyricists. Yeah. You know, I, I think you know a lot of people's favorite lyricists. And you know, um, I also love Chicago. You yeah. know, I think uh, that city really embraced St. Alfred and myself personally when I was there. And um, yeah, it was it was a blessing to kind of meet the creatives there and and everyone else. You know, obviously like Don C and Virg and Nigel. Virgil and was Mano. in the mix even back then. Yeah, actually, Virgil stepped through the doors probably in the first couple of weeks, mm. and he actually um, worked with me on photo shoots and graphics and and all that. You know, so at Saint um, Alfred. Yeah, for Saint Alfred. So yeah. they were doing like RSVP gallery at the oh, same time. RSVP came, yeah, way, came, yeah, came yeah. after you way after that. Yeah. Um, what was that crew like in the early stages of Chicago, which Saint Alfred like kind of in the streetwear sense would yeah. would have been? What was that crew like? It was good, man. Yeah. Like, you know, I think, you know, what what I always said about Chicago is, you know, um the community was already thriving already there. It's just that nobody was really like servicing them in mm -hmm. that way. Right. And and the, the creative community was extremely vibrant you know mm. as far as the artists and the musicians and everyone else and i mean in the first month you have like you know everyone from like twista and r kelly's guys coming mm -hmm. through the don c and birds and and hollywood holt and, yeah. and mano and yeah. that whole that whole lot right and lupe and and uh chili and all those guys were falling through the spot so it really became this hub immediately and um you know being from hawaii it was uh you know, it was kind of like a, a stark contrast from what, what yeah. I was used to. But I also love the music scene from, from the style of hip hop, but also the house music scene, yeah. which is amazing there, right? And, uh, you know, I was a, from Frankie Knuckles to that whole thing. I was like, you know, to, to really kind of ingrain myself in, in that community. It was, yeah, it was, it was a time that I definitely cherish. Love Chicago. Yeah. Big Jordan boom back then? Was that what they were coming in for and stuff like that? Yeah, I think so. But I think also what was interesting is they were coming in for a lot of the apparel. We okay. were bringing in a lot of Japanese streetwear brands mm. from Visvim to Neighborhoods, okay. to Double Taps. And that wasn't really available there at that time. And Lupe was a big, you know, yeah, a big of fan of, yes. of, of that whole like community and, and all those brands. So, you know, we, we clicked up pretty, pretty early on and um, yeah. And then, yeah, and we were also bringing in, you know, we brought in a lot of vintage sneakers. Okay. You know? So when we first opened up, it was like 
wheat Air Force Ones. Oh. And, you know, we had like a treasure chest that we kind of. So you like, were like reselling shoes at the store while having the retail accounts at the same yeah, time? Yeah, absolutely. Was Nike okay with that or? I don't know. <laughs> 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 we, we, we did it anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it was, again, it was like um, the community wanted what they wanted. Were you getting those shoes from like overseas and trading or it was just like local sourcing? No, it was just stuff that we've always had. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think it was, you know, I mean, I was a big collector and so were. Uh, we had a consortium of, of friends and people that that kind of did that and yeah that's kind of how we we opened up we opened up in the city were you guys going in like cracking mom and pop stops anything like that no i mean i was doing a little bit of that back in the day yeah but clear you know, out the basement when, when we opened up uh it was you know we opened up with accounts and and uh and again we didn't open up with a gang of vintage but yeah. enough where people would come through and be like oh look what they got on the shelf and then it started to like word of mouth and yeah kind of kind of kept it moving but you know there was great people like the Dave Jeffs of the world yes. and, and all that, shout right? Out to Dave so Jeff. you know, yeah, shout out to Jeff, Dave. You know, so it was, um, yeah, like the again, like I need to get back. I love Chicago. You talk about like those days in the treasure chest. I was talking to this guy in the morning, and you did an interview with Being Hunted in two thousand four, mm -hmm. and. What they asked you? What are your top ten sneakers at the moment? Listen to this lineup. This is Ready? a killer lineup. Listen oh, to this, this lineup. Yeah, listen this. to this. This is beautiful. Lineup. This is yeah. HTM Wovens. Yes. HTM Air Force One, a favorite of him and I. Both I's. of us. Yeah. Supreme Dunk Highs, Van Slip Ons, Aloha Dunk, Huff Air Max One, Mayfly Jordan Three, Olympic Air Force One, another classic, and Rubber Flip Flops, which I think was just like regional. But that <laughs> roster of sneakers just takes me back to a time of like just amazing product. Do you think it was around that time of St. Alfred? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we were, we opened up in 06. So we were already in development of like mm -hmm. kind of hunting that and, and doing that whole thing. So, and you know, um, the Aloha Dunks were through Kicks Hawaii. Yes. Right? So that was kind of through that. But you know, it's funny you mentioned the the rubber flip flops because um, you know, as, as, as a youth, um, I wasn't really into sneakers. Okay. I was, I'm a Hawaii kid, you mm -hmm. know, so I'm, I, I wore, flip-flops and, yeah. and, and rubber sleepers and yeah. locals and things like that you know it wasn't until i got into skateboarding and basketball that i really got aware and 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 focused on sneakers and you know vans was one of them, obviously of with skateboarding was one of my first kind of uh brands that i connected with and then you know through basketball it was avias mm, yeah and then you know i was short so i you know, Spud Web, okay, Pony City Wings. There we go. Things like that, right? So, I was always it was always through uh, those those two loves of basketball and skateboarding that kind of connected me. To In your time at Kicks Hawaii, and you mentioned the Aloha Dunk. How mm -hmm. did that shoe come about? At the time, the the dunks were were kind of on a little wave, and uh, you know, um, Nike was kind of talking to us and and asking us what we would like to do, and you know, the dunk was obviously like a, a focus at that point that we wanted to do. And, um, you know, the, the whole narrative of, of that dunk was about the environment of Hawaii. So the, the, the color tones of, of, you know, the Aina, which is like the land and then- The woven part, the Lauhala. Yeah, yeah. the Lauhala weave, which is a particular type of weave that uh, Hawaiian artisans use and craft. And, you know, those were kind of like the inspiration points and yeah. And it was, um, you know, uh, an homage and an ode to um, my home. Was, was the release for it hectic? Did you guys have to put a bunch of procedures in place to get the shoes out or was it not uh, at that point yet? It was a different time, yeah. you know, but yeah, it was hectic for sure. And and we actually um, coordinated a special release with uh, Foot Patrol at the time with Fraser and mm -hmm. Michael overseas. And Fraser we, Cook, Michael Kaufman. This, yeah. The, yeah. the people, the all these names the are just like legends. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we did that with those guys uh, across the pond, so, so to speak. and. Um, yeah, that was that was the, that was the release. Was there a sneaker scene in Hawaii in Honolulu at all before y'all opened up? And what did that look like? Absolutely, prior to you absolutely. Up you know, um, I think you know in the first week, um, you know, some dear friends of mine, this guy Blaze Sato and Chris Cam and and Carrie DJ XL, like we're already kind of like deep within that community, and you know, Nocturnal Boys, uh, these DJ crews that were. Um, that were, you know, uh, they were kind of moving around and th they already were very kind of uh, knowledgeable and, and into the scene. It's just that they never had places to buy them, you know? And I think as a, as a kid growing up, that was, that was my life experience. But my father would take me on, on, my father and mom would take me on a trip to 
quote unquote the mainland mm -hmm. um you know once a year and when i go to san francisco i go to harputs mm -hmm. and i drop in and gra Harpets, grab some yeah. addies and things like that uh or you know i was actually also heavy into like ska scene and went up to san francisco and go to nana and pick up my docks and monkey boots and mm. stuff so i was always like it wasn't just sneakers just footwear in general i was always you know kind of into once i once that kind of sparked i think it's interesting too because you do the aloha dunk and that shoe like becomes a grail i remember being on nike talk at the time and that was yeah. like one of those shoes that if someone had it they were like kind of really into it and then they do the the Hawaii dunks mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. few years later. Mm -hmm. did, were you like really into that one or did you have any involvement in that at all? No, uh, but it was done by a dear friend of mine, James Arizumi, mm -hmm. you know, a, a fellow Loke, fellow Hawaiian boy. And, um, you know, we're good friends to this day. And, uh, you know, I, I think um, when you think of Hawaii, you don't think of sneakers, yeah. right? But I think, you know, that there's such a rich cultural heritage there and, and some of the best storytellers that I've came across, especially some, you know, dear family friends of mine, Sig Zane family, you know, they're amazing storytellers. And I think uh, what James did with that dunk was was incredible. Yeah. The Pele dunks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I spoke to James actually before you came on here okay. and, and he was talking about your shared history in the industry. And he said that it was so important that for both of you, the root was skateboarding. He told me, quote, skateboarding was the savior, the inspiration, the teacher for both of you. Yeah. I think again, like, you know, until um, skateboarding came along for me, uh, I didn't really care about sneakers. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't a thing. But you know, obviously, like you got kids skating barefoot in Hawaii. But wow. I, I wasn't really. I wasn't trying to do that. Barefoot? Yeah, absolutely. And they can actually rip. Yeah, I mean, there's this kid <sighs> Cully and a few other guys that would like be skating bowls and pools barefoot. It's, wow. Yeah, it was with gnarly. like with grip. Do you still have grip tape? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds painful. What was the first? <laughs> like, super heavy. What were the first like skate shoes you were skating in? I was skating in skate highs. Okay. For sure. That was my thing. Eras. Mm -hmm. And then later on, half cabs. Okay. Yeah. The Vans presence in Hawaii is such a cool story, too, through all the surfing competitions and things like that. Yeah. You know, I think also, you know, through like even like, you know, the Venice guys always had a, a connection to Hawaii as well, like through Scott Oster or Jeff Hartstall or the, these types of people, right? And, and Vans, you know, also uh, the surfing thing, right? So Vans is also very supportive of the surfing community and to this day still still supports Hawaii in, in that way through like various contests and, and local grassroots kind of thing. So Vans was, is out of like all the brands, uh, I think they're the most connected to Hawaii. For sure. um, talk about skateboarding. Early on you work at iPath. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's, it's interesting for me because I remember I watched like growing up skateboarding, I watched the reel to reel uh mm -hmm. video and you guys guys like matt rodriguez yep. and matt field and they were all wearing the eye pass at yep. the time and i was like i need those shoes right mm -hmm. and i remember i had thrasher magazine and there was like an eye path ad in the back of it and this is like 2001 maybe mm -hmm. and i'm like trying to get the shoes and all there is is like a phone number to like <laughs> there wasn't like a website or yeah, anything yeah, and you yeah. had to like call wow. it and i guess it like went to an apartment in san francisco yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. that we could never get a hold of like get never get someone to answer the phone <laughs> and then i guess they, I think, were, they were uh they were doing other things yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i think it was like it finally came around to like 2000 and it might have been 2001 or 2002 where i think like the distribution spread out a little mm -hmm. bit more mm -hmm. and they were in journeys and i got like the yeah. white and navy high mm -hmm. tops with the with the strap yeah the cats yeah, yeah on it yeah but just yeah. being i was so hyped on it at the time or oh, grasshopper yeah 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 because yeah. there was that and like the wallaby looking one yeah, at the same yeah. time too but i was just so hyped on yeah i was kind of their were... like uh first kind of art director so i did all their ads and catalogs and i live I, mo I moved to san francisco to uh kind of chase being a graphic artist yeah. and graphic mm -hmm. designer but also you know it was skating right that back in the early 90s that was kind of the wave and the spot so that's what led me to san francisco and eventually meeting the new yorkers that would come when it was raining or snowing out mm -hmm. here yeah. so you know huff and did you first and, meet huff in san francisco I did. I did what was that relationship like a near and dear one you know he was a, a best friend he's the best man in my wedding wow um when we were starting um, to talk about opening sneaker shops. Uh, we were on a curb, I remember the day. And you know, he was like, hey, this is kind of what I want to do. And I was yeah. like, look, like, and this was after us kind of looking for sneakers. I think we like bought Spiridons or something like okay. that. Okay. OG Spiridons. Yeah. Love yeah. that, love that. And uh, I said, yeah, you know, something I want to do too. And, um, you know, back then there was a, a little more of a code amongst 
amongst the community where it's like, hey, I'm going to open up here. You open up over there. Mm -hmm. And I want to go back to Hawaii and do it. And he opened up in San Francisco. It was the same thing when why we chose Chicago for St. Alfred. You know, Eddie and James were doing the thing in L.A. Stash and Futura were doing the thing in New York. So right? like you said, sorry to interrupt. There was like a code like you guys are doing this. I'm going over here. Yeah, it was it was, it was an important. Thing it was simpler like, times. And, yeah. and, and it was a. Uh, in, in honor amongst uh you know friends mm -hmm. right and it was it was a respect thing and and i think uh it wasn't so much of a, a business back then right so I, I i think it was just um not to be corny but it was kind of out of the love for for the thing you know and i think through that is why we we chose um actually my home turf hawaii mm -hmm. and i'll see you know i had obviously a regional pride kind of thing right yeah. and uh and chicago um was one because I didn't really know anyone out there, and two, once we went out there, um, ah, I just kind of fell in love with the city and the yeah. people. You know, yeah. Did those regional differences ever like bump up? Like, did you come to Chicago and people were like, "What are you doing here?" You know. You know, I think there was a little bit when, when I first rolled up. You know, island boy coming coming to the city <laughs> to try and to try and do that, but you know, um, immediately I kind of you know I'm. I was just myself and I think yeah. I wasn't trying to like front or be somebody I wasn't and I think like the um the community respected that and I was very respectful of the community as well. I mean it's 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 a tough town. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's a tough city, right? Definitely. And but I I um I immediately kind of very fortunately met the right people and uh yeah to this day St. Alfred keeps did, it moving. Did yeah. you get connected with Nick Diamond back in the day being in like the whole San Francisco skate and yeah I actually scene? was did one of his first ads as a graphic designer oh, wow. and so I worked with Nick many years ago I remember him before his first trade show and I designed like a flyer and some yeah. ads from uh shout out to Nicky yeah you remember the time when the diamonds came out like what was that for you uh yeah i remember that we, we we sold them you know i was i was happy for nick yeah. i mean nick was always you know a great creative always had good ideas and obviously like you know goes down as one of the quote unquote grails right yeah. so um, huge lineup for those did you have a procedure yeah, in place by then absolutely raffle absolutely. tickets and things yeah. like that Nah, actually you know we just first come first serve yeah it was just always always that's kind of how we moved yeah are sneakers more expensive in Hawaii, being that I think that, like, I've just heard that, like, things in general are more expensive in Hawaii than, like, the standard retail price, or is it just... Uh, no, I mean, I, I think they were pretty much MSRP. Okay. You know, I, I mean, nowadays, nothing's MSRP. Right. Uh, yeah. But, <laughs> right. you know, there's a dip, obviously. But, you know, back when we were doing it, it wasn't like we were overcharging premiums or doing any of that. You know, again, it was really about, you know, making sure the community had what the kids on the mainland had or kids on the mainland. Wanted, I feel know. like in that era, though, like when you went to some of the sneaker stores, it was like if you were cool with the people, you'd kind of get like a like the homie hookup price. Oh, no doubt. And yeah, then if you yeah. like didn't, they'd be like ten bucks over. No, like, I, I think the 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 you got you guys the, must attack sometimes. The, 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 the deal sometimes. was more is we would put them on the side for you, mm. so you didn't okay. have to line up. You you know yeah. that was really kind of and that's how we took care of you know the the crew and the select but everybody everybody paid you know and and again it you know there was no goats or or right. stock x's right. or you know a little bit of a e ebay way but a yep. lot of it as you guys know was a little more community on nike talks and it was more about yeah. trading than mm -hmm. selling right so you would trade with people in the uk for jd exclusive sports or or atmos ones or yeah. meta ones were or you whatever. trading a lot back then I would have uh, a guy that would trade some for me. But, <laughs> You're like, I can't be in the room with it. <laughs> well, just like, yeah. you know, yeah, I, I was Keep like, them. I was trying to, you know, we, we, we opened up uh, two stores in Honolulu, then we opened up another store in Guam, and then we opened up a Stussy franchise in Guam, and then it led to Chicago. So quickly it came to like five doors. And yeah. That's kind of when, to be honest, is when I started talking to Nike about, because 2008 came and there was a big kind of um mortgage recession yeah, thing yeah, going yeah. on right mm -hmm. so yes. yeah and when that hit we had we had plans to develop more stores but you know when we saw that coming we said hey like we're not going to stop any more biz dev kind of kind of keep it moving and that really is what i was really interested in i like coming up with the names i like evolving the business and when that stopped um it turned into like more managing employees and and things like that, the stuff that I, I wasn't so interested in. And mm -hmm. that's kind of when I was talking back and forth to Nike and uh, 
an opportunity came up at Converse um, and, you know, talked to my wife about it and, um, yeah, made the jump. And they, they were starting their energy program at the time called First String. And that's kind of when I jumped into that. Were you around for the Lupe Converse patent leather? Yes, I was. Another one yeah. that's embedded in my brain, the Chuck Taylor, I yeah. remember. Mm -hmm. He like, uh, I think he wore them. It's like the Jordan 11 looking one, right? It's all black patent yeah. leather with red. Yeah, tuxedo joints. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. I remember that great era. One question about the Kicks High store. Do you remember any celebrities coming in like on their trips to Hawaii that you remember during that era? I mean, there definitely were a few. Um... Any fun ones that stick out? Hmm. I went in 2012. I don't think I left that a big mark though. <laughs> <laughs> My boy on the wall. Yeah, I would remember that. Um, you know, I mean, my, my memory's so fuzzy. Mm. Uh, we'd have a lot of like Japanese designers okay. come through. Um, but as far as like entertainment yeah, celebrities no. and all that. It's never like Jeezy's on tour and he's no, in Hawaii. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I mean, we, we, we did a lot of music things there as well, but you know, I was also kind of like, I was going out a lot back then. Okay. So um, yeah, my brain's a little fuzzy. Back then. <laughs> Got you. Yeah. Got There's you. a photo, I, I don't know where he would have got him, but of Sasha Baron Cohen in the yeah, <laughs> Aloha yeah. Dogs from yeah. Hawaii. Okay, so that, yeah. all right. <laughs> yeah, I had, a, I had a few people send me those, which was quite funny. That's, yeah. a, that's a good one. <laughs> Seriously though, I do have a fond memory of being there in 2012. I think it was a Black Friday sale. Okay. I think I picked up a pair of Missoni Chuck Taylors there okay. for like okay. 40 bucks. And also a very memorable Kicks Hawaii shoe for me was a Tiger Camo Converse. Okay, yeah, yeah I actually would have been gone by then because in 08 is kind of, 08 is when I went to Converse mm -hmm. and officially kind of stepped away from the business probably about 2010, yeah. right around there. And what about Lalo? Can, mm -hmm. you, can you explain Lalo? Because I feel like yeah. that's a store that people never really talk about. Or it's such an interesting one and they carried Supreme yeah. for a time. Mm -hmm. They were mm -hmm. one of the mm -hmm. only places that carry Supreme mm -hmm. ever outside of Supreme stores. You did your homework, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I opened up Lalo with a, a dear friend of mine, Jules Gayton, mm -hmm. and uh, Jules, um, OG skater and 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 Supreme Stussy crew mm -hmm. um, guy. Uh, um, he moved to Honolulu with his with his wife, and you know we got connected by a dear friend named Giovanni Estevez, like one of the OGs at Supreme. You know, Jules is an amazing vintage hunter. You know, mm -hmm. so like you know, incredible knowledge um, uh, from vintage luxury to vintage Americana to to vintage everything, and and. Uh, you know the the it was spelled L E I L O W, yeah. so it was you know obviously a nod to Hawaii, mm -hmm. and uh, we opened up with Supreme and Neighborhood and Double Taps and Visvim and a big and, deal. Yeah, at the time it was it was it was a big deal, and and um, you know that was more of a a labor of love and and being fans of those brands. You know, growing up in Hawaii, I would go to Japan quite often. It's only six hours away, right? But it's the same distance from, from me to go from mm -hmm. Hawaii to California. So I would go to Japan quite a lot. And uh, and then we opened up with vintage and it was vintage Dukan Moku Hawaiian shirts and vintage Levi's and, you know, vintage Cartier and these types of things. So it was a, it was an interesting mix. And, you know, that was all through the curation of, of jewels, you know, and um, and uh, and that was really a labor of love. Shop didn't make a lot of money, but mm -hmm. it was still to this day one of my favorite stores in the world. That and the old number nine store in mm -hmm. New York. That was always Classic. another big one for mine, too. You, you briefly mentioned the Stussy Guam. I just always thought that was interesting because I remember looking up on a map like 10 plus years ago. Mm -hmm all the Stussy chapter stores. And I'm like, wow, there's a store in Guam because it's just like the furthest place away yeah. from yeah. You know, the United States. And I have to imagine that Stussy Guam t-shirt has to be like the rarest, you know, like Stussy chapter t-shirt because I know people try to collect all of yeah. them. Yeah, the thing about Guam is, well, one is really beautiful. Yeah. And, and the people there are amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really close to Japan. It's like three hours. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of uh, vacationing Japanese or, or Koreans or Chinese, they choose Guam and, and it's a gorgeous place. Like, you know, and we opened up right in Tumon Bay, which is kind of like the Waikiki of Guam. And we had like some prime real estate there. You know, our partners had a, had a great uh, real estate holdings at the time. And and uh, a friend, of, a friend of ours, Rich Cho, kind of connected us, and you know, fellow Guam boy, and yeah, it was. We decided to, you know, talking to David Sinatra and at the time Frank, and you know, we we opened up Stussy. Do you still have any of the Guam shirts? Did they make? Did they make a Stussy Guam? I, I, I sure, I'm sure. I, yeah. I, I still have some someplace. I got a storage facility back mm -hmm. in Hawaii with 
everything. The, the Stussy Kuala Lumpur yeah, we went t-shirt to, is that one was of like, your favorites. That was like, we went to, yeah, we went to Kuala Lumpur and there was like the Stussy store there. And I remember the first time I, I skipped on buying the, the Kuala Lumpur Stussy shirt. And I'm like, that's so stupid that I skipped out on this because you can't buy it anywhere else, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so yeah. we're going to a few different places in your timeline yes. here, but yeah. I want to get back to Converse mm -hmm. 2008. I, yep. You said when you, you went to Chicago, that was a bit of a culture shock for you, but I imagine being in Boston <laughs> felt even more intense. Boston in was an extreme culture shock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was extreme culture shock. But, you know, I was I was there to work, right? And, and, and my thing was I was always curious on the other side of the fence, being independent, and, and, and if I could, like, uh, I'm also competitive. I, I wanted to kind of make a dent, and I wanted to see what I could do out there. And you know, it's working with um, an amazing team at the time. Uh, you know, shout out Matt Sleep, Nate Joe, Ben Edwards, Magnus, Wedhammer, and um, big names. Matt Sleep still there. Yeah, yeah. Nate Joe is that's, a that's new guards group that's now. But the streetwear yeah. scene at the time in Boston was like just so happening too. Mm -hmm. So I imagine you kind of felt at home with all that. Yeah, you know, Jay and those cats at Bodega and. and Tarek and Dion, Frank the Butcher, yeah. Concepts back yeah. then, right? Like, you know, all of those guys. And, and you know, they, they embraced me, you know, real quickly. And, um, but, you know, I was there to, to work and work on this first string thing. And, and that's when we immediately started to, like, rock up partnerships. Um, you know, we developed the Chuck 60s that influenced the Chuck 70, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and we got that insight from Ray Carl Kubo. You know, I'd gone to come to Garcon, mm -hmm. who wanted to make a, a 60s period correct kind of Chuck Taylor. And that went on to inform, obviously, the monster that it is today for Converse, which is this Chuck 70, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, uh, some of those early partnerships are still some of my favorites from Jose Doc Parla to Dr. Damien Hurst. Yeah, DR. DR Wasn't there like there. Uh, one that was like all band aids? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. The band aid one. Yeah. yeah. Clot, the Clot Pro Leathers, I think, were a few years yeah. later. Yeah. I love that one. Yeah, we worked, we worked on those too. Is there a project from that time at Converse that you're most proud of? Probably working with the Sig Zane family. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they are close family friends of mine. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they named my son, right? Like, you know, I got a deep connection with them. So, you know, you know Hawaii's always a soft spot and always home for me so. was that before or after the fragment uh chucks that had they're like the all red pair with like the red toe and, cap on it and the black one with the the yeah. friends of it yeah yeah working with hiroshi as well yeah. during that i time. love those yeah. i actually those i wore those black chucks a ton dude the red chucks i wanted yes. those so bad yes. back then oh my god yeah and then obviously um working with takahiro miyashita from number nine mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i think those are probably what I'm one of my favorites. These are like the running shoe too, with like the hairy suede on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you guys know all that. Yeah. <laughs> so many. I mean, hits. And then, did you end up at Nike directly after Converse, or directly after? Uh, you know, I think Converse, uh, Nike, just kind of hit me up and was like, "Hey, you know, um, whatever. We're we're yeah. trying to reset kind of the energy thing here." And what year know. was that? Let me see. 2011 or 12, somewhere okay. around there, somewhere around there. I think it was, I think it was, a, I think it was our Converse for about three years. Yeah, and uh, and also, you know, I um, Boston's cold, man. You know, it was, <laughs> yeah. it, was, it, was it was a it was a it was a, a little a little much for me. I spent a lot of time in New York that during those years because I would just catch a train on the weekends and kind of go down there, and that was when I really kind of got to move around New York a lot, which is great. Was it ever a question for you whether or not you would go to Nike or it was too big a thing? Um, to you know, I, I never really thought about it until they, they started courting me. Obviously, like, you know, it was within the, the Inc. ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, uh, but when they, they hit me up, and, you know, for me, it was, um, and I got hit up a few things on different propositions, but right, wrong, or indifferent, I always just loved this space. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and, and working within the energy space and, and within the collaboration space and also with pushing innovation narratives and creating new forms and, and new expressions. And I think when um, uh, Greg Thompson at the time, Tomo, hit me up to kind of talk, came over, um, I just clicked with him. To this day, uh, he's still one of my favorite people. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was good to kind of go and, go and cook with him over for a while. Were, were you there for Air Yeezy too during that period? You said like 2011, 2012? Yes. I was. How was big it? was that? Um, yeah, I was there for Red Octobers, wow. and and you know it was funny because I I still have a pair. We made some for Baby North where there's oh yeah, like, like the rubber pairs. injection molded, oh, kind wow. of kind of Crocs looking mm -hmm. kind of vibes. Right? What was that time like? Those early years of you getting to Nike and like projects like that must have been 
compared to like to the other ones? I think it was a moment getting within those walls is polarizing for a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, but what, what I really liked about it even more than the brand or the people I met mm -hmm. and I worked with. Those are the things to this day that I cherish, the designers and the, the thinkers and, and um, the thought partners that I had there. I thought um, that really kind of challenged me. And I think in, in, in my way, I challenged them. Together, we got to places and, and projects and, and product expressions that uh, kind of stand the test of time. And, and I got really close with Frazier at that mm -hmm. moment as well. From, foot patrol days to to nike days and so yeah it was a what's fraser like because to me like you he's, he's somebody who's been in this industry like for so long but a bit mm -hmm. of an enigma and somebody who you don't really see in the public that much but has influenced and affected so much you know just like myself i'm kind of a behind the scenes guy mm -hmm. i'm not you know I'm, you know my ig's private i, I kind of stay behind the, the thing i kind of let the work you know to me the 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 beauty's in the work, mm. you know, like that's the good stuff. And I think, I think, you know, if Frazier was here, he'd probably say the same thing. You know, he, he loves the work and he's a, you know, I, I think both of us, both of us are, are really curious about culture and, and space and, and those types of things. And we love fashion and we love footwear. Frazier's uh, one of the good ones. Yeah. That must've been such a big transition though, because, you know, you talk about early on, like kicks high days, hype beast blog days like kind of mm -hmm. like pre-social media where like you were viewed at some point i guess it's just like a streetwear cool guy you know to like the masses of kids online and maybe in person and then social media instagram following didn't matter and then all mm -hmm. of a sudden now th that's all that matters you know but you had like such a big reputation in the space that maybe you didn't even need feel the need to have like a reputation online from the social media standpoint i i think it matters to people who who think it matters, yeah. you know, I, I think for me, it doesn't really matter for me. I, I, I think, and you know, for me, an, an opinion is only as worthy as the person it comes from. <laughs> and, and, and it's really about like, um, you know, it's, it's, I like my click small, you know, and I, and I like very personal kind of interactions and dialogues and conversations. And, you know, a lot of the, the, the friends that I met back then are still friends to this day, but, but I, I love meeting new creatives i love meeting um uh new quote unquote disruptors mm -hmm. and that have like unique points of view and, and i think um you know that there's i think that that's what i really like about this space is being able to interact and meet new creatives and and, and i see works with ones that that also that i've also revered over the years the, the social media thing is interesting because i think what it did was make people uh very aware of photography and, 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 and marketing, right? And which I think is great. And, and I love that, uh, you know, what the youth is doing today with it is quite amazing, you know? Um, but for myself personally, I didn't grow up in that, that era or that, um, that wave, right? So I never really fully adopted it, but, um, you know, I, I use social media mostly to stay connected to friends and to meet new people. That's kind of, my thing. It must yeah. be nice to, to not. I wish. I wish my brain could free me of, of being obsessed <laughs> Shut those with off. Yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know. Also, you know, I, I don't have my own brands anymore, and these yeah. types of things. So I think that's a lot of what social media is for, whether it's personal brands or brands that you own or operate to really kind of sure. get the word out. So you mentioned yeah. Red October, and I just remember that that release weekend. Like, we often talk about it here many times yeah. when that shoe dropped that February s Sunday morning, but. It was also like one of the most hyped Nike weekends of all time too, because at the same time the the Tiffany High dropped too, and it was like a two part, you know, um, release. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I don't even remember it. It was yeah. it was so long ago. Um, obviously, I remember the the waves that it meant and, and the cultural impact, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it's I, I've been very fortunate to be a part of a lot of like mm -hmm. uh, amazing projects over the years and that's definitely one of them. HTM? Um, one of my favorites, yeah. What stuff did you work on with those guys? I, I, I can't even remember the exact shoes, but yeah. I remember specifically, you know, working with Hiroshi and obviously Mark had a heavy hand in it and Tinker as well, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, um, but my favorites to this day that I, I, is not the ones I even worked on. It's the Wovens. Like, yeah. those, are, mm -hmm. those yeah. are my jams. Such a special time of footwear. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Woven HDM or like, like we were saying, HDM Air Force. Yeah. Ones. Like mm -hmm. I almost brought out the, 
the ones that, 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 that were going to collapse. I have the ACM Terry sitting in my desk, but yeah. we'll save those for another day. Yeah, yeah. Did, were you around for the first, I know, again, just like all the all the people you've worked with. It's, yeah. Um, Tom Sachs, like, were you around for the first Tom Sachs sneaker, the Nike craft shoe in 2012? Uh, yes, I was. Mm -hmm. How did that go? Uh, yeah, amazing. Dyneema airbags, like the whole thing, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. So, yeah, it was an amazing shoe. Um, there's even some stuff that didn't came out that's really, really crazy. These, really? Like mid air mocks kind of things. And yeah, you see those in photos sometimes mm -hmm. from, I, I think there were a handful of images and even like the apparel. I always wanted to get that. Uh, it was like a gold jacket, right? Or like the yeah, the green a, parka, like yeah, almost like a fishtail kind of the, the kinda backpack chunk. that yep. you could mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, pack mm -hmm, up. Mm -hmm. Did you go to the space camp that he had, where you had to like complete it to win the shoes? Um, for the Mars two point oh, two point oh. I did not go to the space camp. I was sick that day. Oh, you would have won. I would. <laughs> I would. I would have been there at the space camp for sure. Mm -hmm. Big big. Uh, uh, one of one of my biggest regrets. We'll, we'll call it that. Yeah, listen, you can't you can't uh, pick when you get sick or not. <laughs> uh, the the Comme des Garcons relationship is an interesting one too because they're one of those brands that Nike Inc, Nike Jordan, and Converse go back to now and again. But it's it's kind of unclear to me like how that actually works. Like how does Nike actually interface with a brand as big as CDG? And is is there a dedicated team at a, at a Nike that talks to the people at CDG? What's that relationship? Yeah, like? I mean, you know, Ray and Adrian are pretty hands on. Really, you know, um, uh, even when even the Vans projects that we work at, they're, yeah. they're 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 extremely hands on. You know, as as big of a behemoth as they are, they are quite small in in, in how they operate and quite close. Yeah, interesting. I think that's in that, that's actually really interesting to me because I guess there was always just a perception that you know that Ray didn't like design the shoes herself, and there was just like a team doing it and it just kind of got signed off on or something like that but nothing gets done without Ray's. <laughs> yeah like okay yeah. really yeah yeah she is she is the master yeah how much time did you spend at nike during that stint i know it was uh let's see i went from converse to nike for a few years and then my son was being born and i wanted to raise him by the beach mm -hmm. and it was either uh going back home or going to california and that's when i was going back to cal i decided to land in california and that's when um they said hey like uh we want you to converse would like you to kind of come back and mm -hmm. and um you know they wanted a stronghold in uh wait they got a beach in oregon yeah they got a beach in oregon <laughs> yeah. it's a little cold out there a little yeah. cold out there a little cold out there so um uh, I, I joined Converse again, and that's when my son was born. My son was born in 2014, so uh, we moved out there during during that time, and that's when um, you know Converse wanted me to work on kind of like a West Coast kind of stronghold and and an attack, you know, and, and that's kind of where the Doctor Woos and the Born and Raised and the Tylers and those things kind of came about. How were those projects like on the second stint of Converse? You know, Doctor Wu and uh tyler like seeing tyler that was probably the ground up basically right yeah i think i, I think it was um it was a good time you know I worked with an artist cali dewitt mm -hmm. as well when we were out there yeah it was good man and you know it was it was interesting time because you know a few key people kind of joined the brand at that time you know, you know julian khan and yeah and, and the middleman mm -hmm. right like these types of things so yeah i i, I enjoyed the time there um, but it was it was short lived because that's when um, you know 2017 hits and yay's at Addy right and, and and then and then so how did that converse to Adidas go? That's when yeah I got the call like hey you know let's yeah. cook again yeah so I went back and that's when Mr Ablo comes out with the ten right mm -hmm. yeah is it Wex hitting you up at all to work on that or Wex yeah, uh, at Adidas. Adidas uh no that that's no i mean i actually met wex at converse right he, okay. he, way back yeah, yeah way yeah. back in the day he yeah. actually worked on shout out to mr wexler mm -hmm. he actually i worked with him on my kicks hawaii and my own kind of solo red kind of kind of mm -hmm. shoe with him um yeah i love john he's he's amazing um you i don't have to tell you guys um yeah. but no during that time i wasn't uh speaking with him when he went to adidas and and you know obviously pulled off like one of the greatest signs right 
uh, I went back to Nike and that's when, um, you know, we got together a small team. And, you know, again, the Nate Jobs of the world, the uh, Fraser Cooks and all of that. And, and, you know, some of the great leadership there that's, that's to this day. Chris Wright, like, I love Chris as well. You know, to this day, one of my, my dear friends. There's, there's a lot of good people that... that when Chris I, Wright's like leading all of footwear at Jordan brand now. Yeah, like, yeah, he is. He is, you know, again, like, um, yeah, I love that guy. So Virgil okay. and them start cooking at Nike and that's yes. when you come back into the fold. Yes. Yeah. Got it. So you were there for the 10. Yeah, I came in at the tail end of that. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How big was that project for Converse with the Chuck Taylor? The Chuck Taylor part? Yeah, it, it was it was a big one. I, I think, you know, it was the outlier, right? Yeah. Of, of that whole thing and, 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 and arguably one of the ones that people most kind of were drawn to. It was um, like one of the hardest ones to make too, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Virgil, Virgil did his thing, you know. And, and again, I came at the tail end of that, you know, that, that was already kind of... Paul in, Middleman was working on that, I in, think. That, that was kind of already in play with, with that whole crew. Um, but it was good to get reacquainted with him, you know, because, you know, ever since Chicago, I haven't kind of kind of worked with him. So. Do you remember him trying to put the... Did, did, what did he want to do? Put the Jordan swoosh on the Converse or vice versa? Didn't he want to do that? I think originally he had wanted to do a Nike swoosh on the, on the Converse, right? Yeah, he did. I, and actually there was a, an artist, I, his name is escaping me, but that was doing it in uh, Los Angeles already. Which mm. was quite interesting. Maybe it was uh, Mike from which, Chinatown yeah. Market. There's the Chinatown Market with like the I think LeBron wore him back in the Market. day. Yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. But you know, I think, it, it, you know, I mean, I remember the first time going into Union here and buying Louis Vuitton like yeah. bootleg AF ones, right? Yeah, wow. those kind of things. So way back, yeah. 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 It's so interesting, too, to see these people come back around. You've stayed in touch with Virgil from those early Chicago days or? A little bit when, yeah. you know, when he had RSVP and, yeah. and all that. You know, when I would go to Chicago, I would see him and, and, and obviously, like, um, you know, seeing his trajectory and his heights is, is, is nothing short of amazing. Like, uh, yeah, they broke the mold when they made him. Yeah, definitely. I remember at the time I had written a story for, or for Complex kind of uh, going around that. Nike had picked up Virgil because they lost Kanye and he they needed him to like fill in that like hype gap at the time. Yeah, I'm not sure about what what the narrative in the story was, but I know that, you know, Frazier and Cristiano were, mm -hmm. were the two biggest kind of supporters of, of, you know, bringing in Virgil at that time. And when I got there, it was just kind of getting reacquainted with mm -hmm. an old friend and, and kind of kept him moving. Cristiano yeah. Fangini, he's the mm -hmm. CEO of Off White now, I think. Uh, at at New Guards. New Guards, excuse yep. me. Yeah, mm -hmm. owner mm -hmm. group. Yeah, another another dear friend and a, another amazing individual. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Didn't didn't you work on something with Frank Ocean and Nike at some point? There was a little. A little oh, something. what was that like? <laughs> what can you give us? We had a meeting. Okay. Yeah. Talked a little bit. Nothing never really kind of came out of it, but obviously like a massive fan and incredible creative. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, there's a lot of those stories, man, about yeah. people coming through the. The Stuff halls that never the walls quite materialized. That, that kind of never materialized. You yeah. Know? I, there, there was at, one at shoe. Company, yeah. There was one shoe oh, that I heard a rumor that Nike Waffle Trainer 2 SP, where it ended up in the market and people were like, this was actually a Frank Ocean shoe, but I never uh, never knew for certain. Maybe that would have been after your time with him. You'll never know. Yeah. <laughs> were, were people at Nike, were they like hyped on that song that he did, the Nike song, or was that like a thing? Yeah, I'm sure. But I think it was just more of like, you know, I think a lot of this energy space is about trailblazers mm -hmm. right and 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 not just innovation of product but innovative individuals right and and i think that's kind of what um you know kind of draws this space for that i think you know even at vans like you know a lot of things i learned over the years and a lot of things that i'm curious about is to this day you know and and, and a lot of it was always informed to me by skateboarding mm -hmm. you know i think mm -hmm. like skateboarders are, are are people that naturally kind of step over the line Right. You got to think about when skateboarders came about to like look at a pool and say, like, you know, I'm going to drain that thing and I'm going to skate it like the creative. That's process. real innovation. We yeah, use that, this word that, a lot. That, that's true industry, thinking, but... you know, and I and, you know, I, I use this analogy a lot where I say, hey, like, you know, skateboarders can look at a bench. And see a million and one possibilities mm -hmm. where a pedestrian sees but a place to sit. Mm -hmm. Like skateboarders can see the invisible in a lot of ways, right? They're, they have a very unique perspective on, on culture and life and style and environments and et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's, you know, coming full circle, like that to me is, is where 
I come all the way back around. Mm. And and now that I'm advanced, like I really get to like, uh, not to sound like corny or get emotional, but I get connected back to a true love, you know? Yeah. And, I, and I, I think that is what is, um, what I'm most excited about now, being advanced. How did you make that decision? You were at Adidas for a few years. How did you mm -hmm. make the decision to sign with Vans? I, I, again, a, a lot of it's through personal connections. You know, mm -hmm. I had some 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 talks, and and it was always the one brand that wherever I was at, I was always there in my closet. I'm kind of looking at them, mm -hmm. like, mm, you know. But you know, my son was wearing them a lot, right? And I also feel like, you know, a lot of times, like especially in the energy space, like sneakers are so overpowering yeah. that sometimes sneakers wear the individual rather than individual wearing the sneakers. Mm -hmm. And I think Vans is something that more is like integrates into your own personal style. And that's always a brand that was always near and dear to my heart because of, you know, because of skateboarding. You know, I think a lot of brands play within space, but they're not from the space. Right. Right. Where Vans is like born and adopted by the community very early on. And, you know, um, you know, after having the conversations and, 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 and it was hard. I love my time at Adidas and, you know, specifically individual uh, Torben. Um, Torben Schumacher. Yeah. Like, I love that guy. Like, yeah, really connected with that guy. That guy, like when we were cooking, it was a, it was a, it was a good time. And there's great people, you know, Brian Grevy and, and Erica and, you know, Daniel and it, it just, you know, um, Eric, it just, there's mm -hmm. just some great people there, but um what what vans allowed me to do was you know i was either always on the product or the brand side mm -hmm. i was never on both sides and i, and I always kind of wanted you know being from the entrepreneur in the independent space you do everything from mm -hmm. empty to rubbish to design the shoe that yeah i was like hey you know i would love to look over brand and product in more of like a gm kind of capacity so that's kind of what they were propositioned me to do mm -hmm. and that's what got me excited and also you know living in california and and, surfs better yeah all of that and and again my, my son i was always going back and forth because my son's sponsors are are in california and he does you know again we were talking about it he does competitive jiu-jitsu and so we were going back and forth a lot and that's kind of when we decided to kind of make the full move did yeah. you have like a playbook already when you came to vans did you know what you wanted to do when you landed i didn't i i just had a love for the brand you know and i also felt like skateboarding the industry is small but the influence skateboarding has on culture is vast, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, you know, someone like Virgil was a big part of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I mean, low key. When I would meet with Virgil, I walk into his atelier. Skating. He's wearing Vans. Yeah, Vans. Okay. You know, and he's like, and, and he's like, oh, you know, hey. you know, I'm like, oh, good man. Like, we, yeah. just, we, we just talk in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and, and just have dialogues about it, and and uh, yeah, I think that was a full circle moment for me, and. You know, I think at Vans, for, for what I always felt was that, you know, the, the influence skateboarding has on on the culture and broader culture of art and design and, and, and music and et cetera, et cetera. You know, it had a unique perspective when you put that through the lens of skateboarding. And I think that's kind of what we did with this most recent launch of OTW and mm -hmm. the partnership with Sterling Ruby, right? right like right. So, we created this skatable, kind of um sculpture uh that was quite impactful and 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 you know i think that inserted vans into a design conversation and not just a product design conversation but environmental design conversation and 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 experience and i think that's kind of um you know that's what i liked about the opportunity at vans and it is about being able to like be a part of the brand side as well as the product side and you know we got a great team what's yeah. it like being on being at vans vf court being under mm -hmm. the same house as supreme interesting you know I, I mean i've known james for many years and obviously i have a lot of great friends there um and supreme supreme like yeah. they're you know they're they're anomaly right they're um they're that unicorn did you get to use the employee discount on the jacket you're no, wearing. this is many years ago. <laughs> something <laughs> tells me. Something tells me he doesn't need the the discount. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, they're they're you know the James and Eddie take care of me. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I love those guys. And again, another brand that um, has really dimensionalized and and you know born very humbly out of skate that has reached the heights that it's it's done today. You know. Do yeah. you remember seeing it for the first time as a kid? Do you remember where that was? You would have seen Supreme. Supreme. It would be when. Is when uh, Chris Keefe and Jones and Quim and Gio, Peter BC, those guys would come to San Francisco and 
they were all wearing Supreme, and you you first noticed the quality, like the sweatshirts. Yeah, you're like, oh, these are like dumb heavy. Yeah, and they're and they're good, and they just look better. You yeah. know, things like that. And it was, um, yeah, it's just you know, again, I, I think a lot of it in a lot of things, it's it's taste level, and James's taste is yeah is paramount. Yeah. Anything coming up at Vans that we can uh, we can talk about or any any little 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 teasers, little previews you can give us? Yeah, I think I think, you know, I can't speak too much about it, but you know, I think you know, I think what Vans is positioned to do is is grow with the culture and, and influence that skateboarding has. You know, and I think, you know, what we were able to you know, we, we had a soft preview last Paris in, in, in Paris Men's Week with OTW and then we worked on a photo exhibition with uh, Atiba Jefferson and architecture mm -hmm. in Miami mm -hmm. at Art Basel mm -hmm. that was very well received. And and now um, just a few weeks ago with the launch of Sterling Ruby. And, yeah. you know, I think that one was an, an amazing project and that's going to be ongoing that you'll see future collections and expressions from. But, you know, Sterling being a former pro skater and obviously, um, you know, blue chip artist. And yeah, and, uh, yeah I mean... He's really challenged the team, and and but the but but I love about Vans is, you know, the leadership there and and the leadership at VF is really embraces uh, creative thinking and progression, and you know, and I think at the end of the day, I think that's kind of what skateboarding is all about, and and what a, you know, it, it, as as anti as skaters are, like they're very style conscious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> their influence is vast, and and rightfully so because. They, they move the needle yeah you know? such a cool place for you to land too just this idea you spoke yeah. about it a bit it being full circle and just again i was speaking to james before this and one of the things he said to me that i really loved he said not many people could understand for someone from a small island in the middle of the pacific to make it to where he is is like a miracle oh that's, that's awesome it's a good it's a I, I appreciate that from yeah. from a dear friend and you know again like i i come to work and they live and breathe it. Yeah. People are skating around. There's wetsuits drying off of racks there. That's, you know what I mean? Cool. If the waves are right, you're kind of like, oh, where is everybody? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and I, I love like, you know, that word authenticity gets mm -hmm. thrown around a, a lot and, and is, it can be quite contrived depending how yeah. it's used. But at Vans, it's it's the real thing. They, they eat, live and breathe skateboarding. And I think with OTW, um, you know, what I like to say is, you know, um, it's kind of reorientation back to who Vans truly is. And, and I think that's kind of what we're, what we're doing there. And, you know, we also have a dear friend, um, longtime colleague, Drika, who just okay. joined. And she's now the CMO that I worked with a lot of energy projects on at Vans. And, yeah, we've got some good things there. We look forward to it. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much yeah. for giving us your time. So much history. I'm old. So much history. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Thank, thanks again, and uh, looking forward to seeing mm -hmm. the continued projects. Always cooking. Yeah, and you know, again, I also um, uh, I mean it when I say like I'm. I think what you guys are doing and the, and the individuals that you guys choose to talk to are, are I'm, I'm always curious, and there's always great things. And I think you guys put a lot of people on to like stories and and history and narratives. That's 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 really important, you know. And I think um, you know if you guys didn't know what was up you guys wouldn't have the topics and the individuals that you have so thank you so much thank, for thank that. you Ian. appreciate it appreciate it, it ian all right everyone this has been the complex sneaker show actually going to be off for a week so we will see you in two weeks please like subscribe and we'll see you in two weeks <laughs>